I'm your Randy host. Go. Or one of your hosts. So am I. I'm a better ready. looking host. I'm ready to go. Dr. Mark Vaughn and <laughs> Dr. the Vaughan. other one. The other one. Wow. <laughs> We're already starting out contentious. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. So uh, Dr. Gwaine wanted to have, uh, what do you call it? This for that or? A discussion. A discussion about coronavirus tracking because we well yeah. i've been talking about it on uh, on my podcast uh, dr vaughn's covid 19 updates because i'm kind of looking at other countries in the world and seeing that taiwan specifically has done an awesome job at controlling and just totally keeping out covid 19 since very early on in the pandemic and one of the essential parts of that is tracking, uh, mm -hmm. which their country is able to do because of an infrastructure they already have in place right. that allows them to track their people. And then in the United States, thanks to Apple and Google working together, we have a way that we could do it with mobile phones that doesn't involve the uh, trading or, or mentioning of personal identifying information through the system. Uh, the person's phone itself is what gets the identifier that tells them that they've been near somebody who has had COVID-19. And we can go into more detail on that if we need to later. Yeah. So big fan of that. Um, I'd like to see it work. Dr. Gwaine says. I'm a big fan too. And I think it's working great in other countries. But my contention is that there's no way this is ever going to work out in the, in the United States. Now, here's the thing. The survey that you put out didn't, didn't ask the question right. <laughs> Because I agree with you in the survey. Because <laughs> the survey said, is COVID tracking possible? Absolutely. It is possible. Many other countries have shown is that it's possible. COVID tracking possible. Yeah. Many other countries have shown that it's possible. My, my if you go over and read my blog today, my uh, point is that in the United States, uh, it's essentially not going to happen. Um, it, um, it's essentially dead on arrival and... So it's not not, not not going anywhere in the United States. Yeah, okay. if you put in that little caveat, I I, I say that oh, it's, it's not going to okay. work out. So anyway, just to let you know, <laughs> he approved of the exact wording because I asked him twice. Is this the way it's okay to write it? No. <laughs> but now apparently it's supposed to say in the USA. So imagine, yeah. imagine if the survey that we put out earlier on YouTube said in the USA. Everybody would agree with me, obviously. Okay. <laughs> nah, so, I don't even know what the survey results so, were. But. We should probably know that. Somebody check and let us know. Yeah. In the comments. So <laughs> the, um, the, the reason I think it is possible, even in the USA, mm -hmm. is because if we have what we, we see going on with the numbers going up and up and up, what is 120,000 new cases daily, 1,000 deaths daily, daily that's in the where, US. That's where is, we're at. Is what that's we're, scary. Yeah. When you see a pattern like that, um, there, there reaches a point where a lot of municipal authorities think that the answer is to close businesses. Mm. And I don't think that's the answer either. Um, rather than enforce mask wearing. And in fact, we had comments on our, our thing about masks aren't working. Well, uh, there, there's, there's the yes I, and, I and no. The, it's not the masks that aren't working. It's something else. Um, yeah. And closing down businesses in addition to having uh, mask wearing, is that really going to get us that much more? Well, I point to, again, I'll, I'll, I'm a fan of Taiwan, where they've been able to get it to work right. with yeah, their system done. of tracking. And I, I feel like in our country, the thing that doesn't let tracking work is our freedoms, right? Absolutely. That's that, I would agree with that, yeah. Whereas... The so how do shutting we get down around businesses, that? to me, uh, taking away a person's ability to feed their family because you shut down their business. Yeah, I don't, that's not okay. Wide scale, you know, every restaurant in town or bars or churches or whatever else the businesses are that have people congregate, those being shut down, uh, at some point, the wrong against those people and the violation of their rights to have their businesses open is going to be seen that as a is bigger... A threat issue as well. Yeah, I, than, I don't think we can tracking. ever, ever go back to that full wide scale shutting down that we had in 
Um, even though we're getting worse and we're going up on these like tiers that we have, I, we, that's not going to happen. That can't happen because yeah, I agree. It's the same thing. It's, it's a freedom on another level that, that is being infringed. But yet it's happening in Europe. Yeah. Not that that means it'll happen here, but you know, they, they probably thought we would never go back to that. Yeah. Somewhere it was like, what, they've been shut down for like 90 days or something like that. Something, something crazy. Draconian measures in, um, was it Melbourne? Uh, Melbourne, sorry. Oh, yeah, somebody, Andrea. Andrea would tell us. Yeah, she said and they have tracking there in Australia. Yeah. And yeah. and uh, I think it was Teresa who commented on my blog who said they have it in um, I miss uh, her. up north in, uh, in Canada as well. So Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, right now, you're right. Uh, tracking with an app is, is not happening. Yeah. But, but what will what will the future hold? That's the question. I'll, I'll so so we question. do have an incoming... Um, president we're not getting political here but let's just be real just simply uh, saying that he's we, incoming is political at this point yeah okay well we have a, a president coming in who who <laughs> probably is going to, yeah that's right um because there are those who do deny until, that at this until point. there's a concession speech okay so let's say somebody please interrupt telling us there's a concession speech please <laughs> well, let's say that we have uh biden come in as our president uh who um has put a lot who, who has a different view let's say on how uh yeah. how to um work or, or how, to, how to help us with uh coronavirus um do you think having a different administration could do it because my 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 thoughts are, I don't, I don't think any administration or anything like uh, anything from above coming down is unfortunately not is, is going to make changes. Um, mm -hmm. I think, I think that um, the American freedom spirit, unfortunately, is so against it that that it won't go anywhere. So you think that's one reason? You, you I have other reasons too. You think but. we're dealing with a populace that is so unique in the world compared to Australia or? Taiwan, then that could be. I mean, it, it... at least some of us, yeah. Okay. In, in right. the United States, um, and and that's all it takes for the the um, virus to continue to spread in in that population. Yeah. Um, that's just one thing, and the other thing is just the the sheer number of cases at this point. Uh, if we're yeah. having one hundred and twenty thousand cases a day, that's not just 120,000 calls, because you have to call that person, but then you have to talk to them about all of the contacts they've had that are more than 15 minutes in the past, uh, I think it's five days is what they say. And then, so that could be hundreds of thousands. That'd be big. Yeah, yeah. That'd be big. Bigly. <laughs> that would be big. Uh, with it going at the it's rate It's really it big. So. So that's that's another reason why I just I, it's getting like if we had maybe instituted this early on, I, I mean we'd still have the hurdle of getting over the uh, the freedoms thing. But we but if early on, if if a good unified effort, uh, we probably could have done it. But at this point, I think it's just too far gone. Yeah. The cat's out of the bag, unfortunately. The app doesn't require trackers. You're right. It doesn't. And I, and the way they do it, I I think it would work out and, great. And by yeah, I was going to say by any any judge in any court if they presented it to them saying this is a violation of people's privacy, the anybody who can explain the data, and it's a little hard to explain. I've tried to a couple times. Yeah. I, I understand it when I read it. <laughs> but a, a judge would be able to look at it and go, this doesn't violate anybody's viol uh, right to privacy right. Uh, or people not knowing where you are because it works with the person's mobile device analyzing the data instead of somebody else analyzing their phone's data. Right. Yeah. But it requires people to allow that on their phones, yeah. right? Yeah, that's the thing. It, it, we have to that, get yeah. people to Again, say, yeah, to let's, let's do that right. instead of closing down every business. Let's do that instead of hiring yeah. people that cost money to make phone calls. And, and the fact in your article, you said that they're asking people personal questions like, who have they been with and what's their contact information? Right. That's how it's been working. That sounds like a way bigger violation of people's privacy than the phone doing the job for you with anonymized data. Mm -hmm. It doesn't know the person that you came in contact with. The phones traded some kind of a signal when they came within right. 
so many feet. Yeah, and, and we're not not to that point yet, unfortunately. If we could, that would be. Um, hey, welcome a new member, Suki. Oh, who's that? Suki M. I hopefully I don't know Suki M. I hopefully, I, you, Suki I, hopefully I'm saying that Suki right. Suki M. Thank welcome. you. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Suki, we're glad to have you be yeah. a member of the Auburn Medical Group. You say hello to all your friends. Boy, that sounds like that should be in a movie somewhere. Is say, somebody, say hello. To, oh. <laughs> <laughs> to my little friend. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're getting to, uh, uh, thus far, Bianca and Andrea uh, AAA are, this, are the other ones commenting This is here, a so. live show with interaction with the <laughs> audience, those of you watching it after the fact. Yeah, so. you too can become a member and click the bell icon and also be alerted so that you can get in on this as well. So, And you could um, answer that question with the, uh, <laughs> the poll <laughs> that we sometimes put out before the show. <laughs> right. That, um, so, so if we were using a um, app, yes, that would that would clear a lot of hurdles uh, that we currently have. Yeah. You still need to call each one of those people that that or or somehow let them know. So you could do that on the phone, I guess. Well, the app doesn't. F the, the app is meant to be fully to integrated, totally without callers. Yeah. But it only works for those who are participating. Yeah. And have the phone. Right. Which is potentially a lot more than what... It could be better than nothing. Manual calling can accomplish. Yes. Even voluntarily. If it's, if it's automated. It could be a lot more. If it's automated. That, that, yeah. that would um, clear the hurdle of, of yeah, the, the calling yeah. for sure. And here's the reason I keep going after this. You know, I'm not going to say beating a dead horse because that's a really bad joke that we exchange at yeah. times. But <laughs> the reason I keep going, coming back to this is because the pandemic's not over yet. <laughs> Somebody may yet listen to to reason here. With the, yeah, that, and that's what I'm saying. With with some um, states pos doing possibly it. a new administration. I, I, yeah, I have to put that caveat in there, I guess. But but um, it, it's, I mean, I would I would be ecstatic, and and I would be on board. I would have this on my phone because I know how it works as well. You just don't believe it. Um, and it's not that I don't believe it. I mean, it, it at all. I I I just feel that the uh, half almost uh, of people in the United States are are. Uh, of the opinion that it's not gonna, um, that that's a violation of their of their privacy, and and they're not gonna put it on their phones. Unfortunately, okay. that's that's probably my biggest hurdle there. Is it a violation of their privacy? No, okay. it's not. All right, All right. I, so, I, absolutely not. So public education is part of what needs that to would occur be huge. Here for people can understand yeah. how how it was designed by Apple and Google in a way <clears> that it doesn't take their information out of their phones. It brings information into it for right. the phone to make the decision. Right. Yeah. But you also, it's not just that because they, the, if we we walk back here, um, you were the one that were in on those calls with the plastic with the county, right? Right. And why weren't why didn't the county do it or the state do it? What were their reasons? I'm not going to say it on the show. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we've got to get a buy-in from everywhere, yeah. even our, our government officials. That's what I'm saying. Yes. yes. We, we, we don't even have that at this point. We need our government officials to understand how this app works, that it doesn't violate people's confidentiality, and that whatever public opinion is, we need to be leaders and inform public opinion, not be victims of public opinion sure. as public health professionals. Yeah, and, and even then, it it should not be, but beyond, yeah, like you're saying, uh, it, this should not be something that is different when you go from county to county or state to state. Um, it sh there should be a unified opinion yeah. on how this thing works. Yeah, and some states, some entire states are already doing it. Yeah. Yeah, I think somewhere on the East Coast, we looked it up once. Yeah, we should look at their numbers, huh? That'd be curious. Yeah, it'd so, be interesting to see if, if so it's actually made a, a significant... On our uh, our little survey we put out there, our, our yeah. poll that we put out by Celeste. Did you see it? I think I did. She uh, was asking about, the about flu? influenza. Yeah. She wants to track that. So influenza is, is um, not tracked with contact tracing, but we do have data on it every year. CDC has their flu view map that you can look at at cdc.gov. And what I found was... We have a state with influenza, and it's Iowa. Hey, there you Iowa, go. Of all places, that's your influenza update. Iowa. Yeah, they they track that over time, and you can you can at the end of the season actually watch it progress. It's yeah. it's kind of yeah interesting, seeing how it moves through the states. Which Iowa is, I believe, one of those states that's where we're places. having the increased numbers of COVID nineteen. Also, hmm, yeah. So they they are <laughs> sounds like they're attempting to have the twin demic in. Yeah. So let's let's talk about another issue with um, 
uh, with uh, this or the um, contact tracing uh, testing. We don't have a rapid turnaround of we results in the United States. Yeah, and that was another question by Celeste. She's under the impression that the testing is completely worthless, but uh, there was some kind of rapid... <laughs> At one point it was, because it was like 14 days to get a result. That, well, yeah, <laughs> oh, you made man. that point in your, your write-up too about how long it takes. Yeah. Uh, it's the it, Abbott uh, quick one that still looks like it's the, the decent test. Right. There's another one that's very similar to it, also an antigen test that's out in large numbers that apparently is horrible. Hmm. Like, like uh, its sensitivity rate was 30%, I believe. when they <laughs> so bad. So, yeah, but this Abbott test that the government bought all of the testers, and I don't know where they are, it sounds like something that would actually be very useful, and you get the answer within uh, 15 minutes, maybe? Maximum That's 15 minutes. That's what we need, yeah. I think they're saying that Because then you can get it before the person even leaves the building. And, yes. And tell them, you don't even need to make a call. You can just... And in your article, you yeah. wrote why that's important, because then they actually have a reason to take measures to quarantine themselves, not just, oh, quarantine yourself just in case it's positive. No, right. you're positive. No. Quarantine. Go now. Yeah. And the person that's don't negative go. on, you tell them, oh, you don't even have to start it in the first place. Go on with your life. That's right. Yeah, don't stop by the supermarket on your way home. No, not if you, <laughs> while we're waiting for your test. Not if we have a positive. And, and if we're uh, waiting for a test, that's what we have to tell people. Exactly. Yeah, they've got it. They're supposed we to, don't, until we get a result, you need yeah. to self-isolate. So I, um, I'm, I'm still looking for yeah. how are we going to now, get these fast tests? Because they're just not exactly. available in the yeah. United States. At a, a but wide the, uh, the, the strange thing is they're available other places. I mean, they are out there. And yeah, they, they, they are. And they are being used in other countries. Yeah. So it, it, it's um, yeah, disheartening. So uh, I hope that I'm wrong. Don't yeah. let me be clear. Um, I, I hope that I'm wrong and that we are able to institute something that we can prove is not infringing yeah. on anybody's rights and, and that people are okay with. I, I hope that I'm wrong, but I'm a little, uh, unfortunately. And to a certain extent, I think that part of it may be actually having a different presidential administration that might may. help facilitate that. But if it were to be available, then we can't say it's just that reason that it got out. It could be because... They manufactured enough. To, we, uh, yeah, yeah. We have finally have available. all of these. So it may make one yeah, person look the, better than the other because of the, the timing. hurdles uh, jumped over. Yeah. Should we give the announcement for the really good news? We absolutely should because if you read through my article at the end, there is uh, I, I say that probably the only way out of this is with a vaccine. And we are happy to announce that Pfizer has found out that their data indicates that their vaccine is effective. Not only effective, but very effective. 90% yeah. effective. Uh, so that is going to be something that's that very we're watching. Uh, even though that's super exciting news, um, it does need to be accompanied by some facts that go along with it, like <laughs> nobody's going to see this vaccine for a long time. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and those who do are still going to be few in number. And uh, yeah, so much so that the second vaccine to be found to be effective may actually be the first one that gets widespread administration and actual effectiveness in helping people. Uh, the The Pfizer vaccine, it's great that it's very effective. It's great that it's it's looking like uh, they're ready to look at the safety data in a week, I believe. Yeah. And from what we've already said of the scene of their safety for, data, it looks week. like it does not have any serious adverse effects. That was not this one that had all the news about the transverse myelitis. That was another one. Yep. But the problem is it has to be stored at, depends on which article you read, 70 or 80 degrees negative, <laughs> negative yeah. Celsius. We don't have freezers like that in that, our office. That is a uh, I don't hurdle. even know if, how much capacity they would have for storage for that temperature at the hospital uh, or or it, pharmacies or, it would, or they transportation. Would that way. Yeah, trucks it, to get like this whole thing, as you have said before, is, is being run by the um, Department of Justice. And, and there was a, a conference call or some meeting over the weekend where they said they're ready to go. Are you they talking about they, the Department of Defense? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, they're helping with the uh, so, logistics. So, so they, they're the ones that would have to um, figure out. And I, I'm pretty sure that they have a way, they, that they have taken that into account, that they yeah, either have a mobile unit or some way they've had to, time to, get ready. to transfer mm -hmm. a vaccine at, at, at that. Yeah. Um, I'm a little confused by you know, one low, thing low that came out, and that's that when the vaccine first gets out, the government has contracted with Walgreens and CVS to administer it to people in long-term care facilities. I, I don't know how they have the freezer capacity. Maybe they'll have like hey, a I don't know how that works, storage right. container on their property or something. But So these are things we're going to be seeing very soon. Uh, it's very exciting time to 
finally have a pr oh also the proof of the vaccine so this acts on the s protein yep mm -hmm. the spike protein on the capsid of the of the virus that's the same place that all of these other vaccines that are very far along and starting phase three trials or in phase three trials work on so it is very suggestive that they also they, they are also, going to yeah. be very effective uh, so it's a matter of having them be easier to get like maybe you don't have to wait three weeks between shots one of them coming out, you don't have to wait three days. You can do it in two weeks. Uh, or don't have to have super cold storage. Right. Another one has that going for those, it. Those would be helpful. So we do have these other vaccines that possibly will be, be the one that we get instead of the one that Pfizer made. Right. So there you go. We do want to get to your comments here. Um, your especially comments. Suki's. Because uh, she's yeah, our, Suki, our new our channel new. member. But, but real quick, um, uh, Andrea of Adelaide in Australia. Uh, did want to say they have they have an app in Australia. Oh, they, they have an app still there too. call and ask for name and numbers. So I don't know how that works. Um, so you, so that you can do that when you don't have one hundred twenty thousand new cases. That's daily. true. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> we we would not be able to do that here. Um, but uh, what were some of the other uh, comments? Uh, yeah. So. Suki had a, a question. She said, please explain how someone can test positive with no symptoms and everyone in their home test negative. Positive with no symptoms and everybody see, in the home tests negative. Yeah, and, and um, the reason that everybody in the home probably tests negative is because they have no symptoms and they're probably very good at not transferring that virus. So, so typically this virus is transferred, you know, through, um, you know, Droplets in Respiratory the air. Respiratory droplets. And those are much bigger uh, when, you know, you're sneezing, coughing. Um, singing. Singing. Yelling. So so if you just don't have symptoms, you're not coughing, you're not doing all of those um, forceful activities that, that, that expel the uh, virus. Often people with who test positive but have no symptoms also have a lower viral load. So it's less likely that they're going to get those around them sick as well. So, so a couple of reasons there. So one, they're not get, having symptoms to give it to other people and two, lower viral load. That's why people around them probably aren't testing positive too. Now, they, it is still possible for that transfer to happen. So, so that person should self-isolate and try to stay away from their family to keep them safe. Yes. And, so. and she's right to ask about uh, household members because that is who's most likely. That's how it's happening. Yeah, that's to, how we're seeing most yeah, of the spread. Most spread is right. within households. Yep. Uh, let's see, other questions. <clears throat> um, I'd like to know how accurate the tests are. Depends uh, on the test. Yep. Listen, oh, so uh, there are details about specific tests on Dr. Vaughn's COVID-19 updates, the podcast yeah, that you can find seeing. at iTunes and everywhere else that they have podcasts. Yes, check that out. Um, but as far as the, the Abbott one we were talking about, the antigen test, that's very rapid, very inexpensive, $5 a test? It, yeah, it's cheap, yeah. Um, it is not that. as sensitive as the PCR nasal swab for RNA test that is kind of the standard that we're using in clinical situations, but that's not a drawback. I used to think it was until some, uh, some of the articles that were coming out pointed out that those tests are picking up people that may have been positive and no longer are contagious, but they still have fragments of the RNA in their nose, which can last for weeks. Yep. And so it's actually a little too sensitive in that it's telling people that they're contagious when they're not. Whereas this other test isn't quite as sensitive. It needs a little bit more of the antigen uh, mm -hmm. to make it turn positive. And so it seems to correlate better with people who are actually needing to be called positive. Um, because we don't have to call everybody positive who can yep. make a test turn a right. color. Or... Right. Um, some more comments. Uh, so Suki is from Minnesota. She's seeing, they're seeing an increase there in, in some yeah, comments. Yeah, Minnesota's on, getting hit. On uh, uh, people having close relatives. Suki's daughter, I believe. Um, Bianca has, some, was it Bianca who has some other uh, family? Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and we're hearing it from family Brother also that wife, yeah. now they're knowing people who are dying from COVID-19. Just about everybody knows somebody who's had it. and, and The huge increase gosh, we've had yeah. here lately. Um, and apparently in um, uh, Great Britain or uh, wherever Bianca is, it's an NHS test. So it's it's one that is just approved by their national health system. Yeah, I, uh, I don't We don't know, know which one I, that I, is. I don't but, know the latest hopefully one. I'm sure they've done their research. And, I know and they were using... Um, yeah. 
That's, PC, a, that's another problem around here. There are so approved. many approved tests that uh, wherever you go, you can get a different test. You don't really Emergency always... use authorization yeah. approved. Right, yeah. 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 Um, that's an FDA thing in the United States. So, so you're not always getting yeah. a, an equally effective test. Right. So, yeah, there are things that people can just purchase. Unfortunately, yeah. They have this emergency use authorization that, well, as we saw a couple of weeks ago with the news, they were absolute junk. Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry so, I don't recall the name because I didn't recognize the name of the company. <laughs> um, I, I just know it's something we never looked at using in our office. And and just for an update, we actually don't have an in-office test. We we still use the PCR nasal swab for RNA test that we send out and takes days to get back. I apologize to our patients for that right. delay, but we just don't have something better yet. Hopefully, with some things happening, maybe at the national level, we'll we'll have that. Be we'll addressed. See. We'll see. Maybe a, by uh, making it a priority. Coronavirus task force. Yeah, but we don't have a change in administration <laughs> until January. January. Which, well, yeah, the vaccine so will start it, being I'm given sure, to somebody at that point. Yeah, yeah. By then we'll have a vaccine. We'll be kind of all yeah. all efforts towards that. So, so yeah, I think that's yeah. put efforts towards I, that, which we're doing a great job of, uh, on that front. I guess I should comment about just because a vaccine will be administered to someone in January, that doesn't mean that we don't need to keep doing all these other things. Absolutely, yeah. First of all, it takes 28 days from the time you get the first injection to consider that the vaccine is effective. Mm -hmm. And then there's the issue with the very, very limited supply at first that's going to go to healthcare providers and people in long-term facilities right. and people with chronic health conditions. And then making sure people yeah. take that vaccine uh, is going to be another one. There's going to yeah. be ha have to be a huge education effort to make sure people feel safe yes. Uh, yes. taking the vaccine. Yeah. Uh, even even amongst healthcare personnel, um, yeah. some of the statistics there are yeah. a little startling, unfortunately. Yeah, but thankfully we're getting, even, even now we're still getting data on the, uh, even the very first one is, right. e even though it's got that uh, proof that it worked on the, well, they had over 90 positives in the tests, and then they found out it was over 90% positive for protecting mm -hmm. the people who got the vaccine. Uh, they're still getting safety data from the people who are participating in the study. So as this goes to January, you know, months from now, we're going to have months more of data on those people who got it in the study. Yeah, so, right, right. Uh, so, so the longer those, it's given those keep spread. going, you know, you know, the more yeah. information we have. And, it, and the longer it goes out, the you know, that, that likelihood of adverse yeah. uh, events goes down drastically. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the likelihood of having something really far out. Yeah. Yeah. It goes down to very near zero. Yeah. The, the old standard was for uh, studies to have been going with people with the vaccine for a full year before saying, okay, now we have enough safety data because people have had it for a whole year. Right. We're not going to have that with this. That's that's the area where yeah. we're going to have to say, three yeah, months maybe, four I'm months. okay with it being less than a year's worth of safety data because, like you said, most things are going to happen early on. Yep. Early in the first few days, and then it drops off over the first few weeks, and then at, when you get out to months, there's just not stuff really showing up that much. Yep. And, and I think I can speak Very for unlikely. both of us that we've been looking at the data, watching these as they roll out, and we're both comfortable. Well, we'll be comfortable. It, it, yeah, as long as um, there's no surprises. Yeah, beyond as, what between we, now and then. <laughs> yeah. But what, what, uh, the yeah. way everything is going and looking right now, we're both comfortable taking that vaccine. Yeah. At, at, yes. So take it from two YouTube doctors. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> you first. Okay. <laughs> No, actually, I'm fine with it. Uh, yeah, it, it'll be better than that shingles. The shingles vaccine yeah. oh, you had a reaction to, Sh man. I now I know what those patients were saying about. Yeah, I got that shingles shot. Oh, man, that yeah. got me. I'll still get my second dose. It wasn't that bad, <laughs> but yeah, T make sure you're not working the next day when you get that shingles vaccine. Yeah. Woo. All right. Any other uh, comments, questions? New yeah. members like uh, Suki? Or? No, but yeah, we gotta. They're talking amongst themselves. So yeah. You too. <laughs> They're cute. You too can be a part of the community and talk amongst uh, yourselves. Okay, so how was the verses? Was the verses? I don't know. Do, do, uh, we'll have to um, ask our audience. Uh, Dr. Gwen's proposal versus Dr. Vaughn's proposal. I guess uh, make your comment below. It made for discussion. <laughs> so it worked. I'm, I'm for it, but I just, yeah. Yep, I understand. Yeah. We'll keep, I'll, I'll keep pushing Hopefully. for it though. Possibly yeah. for a oh, different I, future. Oh, I, I will too. Okay. Uh, I won't give up on it. So thank you, Dr. Green. Yep. Anybody you want to thank? Yeah, while you're at it, go over and check out drgreennight.com. Uh, I outline uh, all those reasons why I, I feel that this is um, a very difficult 
uh, task to go about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, over yeah. there, I do have some patrons I'd like to thank. Boo Boo Kitty and Teresa Roat. Thank you for supporting the vlog. Appreciate it. And I would like to thank Boo Boo Kitty and Lindsay Antoine. Till next time. Hey, I'm Dr. Gwen Vaughn. Dr. Mark Vaughn telling you to stay in good health. You too, Rusty. Thanks for just showing up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs>